Okay, let's turn the radio down so crybabies at records record studios don't flag me for copyright even though i'm not trying to copyright it anyway all right guys here we have another one we have a 96 club car ds i believe uh 96 yeah this one's gas this one here the customer's complaint is that the cart kind of stutters it stalls it doesn't have a lot of power i believe let me double check my notes uh it alert oh no wrong one okay so club car it's sluggish and there's possible carb issues i think that's all we're doing to this we're not doing oil change or anything like that i don't have any notes on that um i did notice when i'm driving it it's kind of got an intermittent not want to start mode so i'm kind of thinking it is carb uh it's also possible that there could be some issues somewhere possibly in the micro switch down in this control box down here uh, so we'll pop that off. We'll check and make sure all the wires are clean and we'll kind of get into seeing what is going. I see some weird wiring going on in here. Um, but yeah, we'll see what's going on with this. I'll get the cart up on the ramps and get the camera set up and then we'll dive into it. So the lav mic is still broke. Uh, the microphone itself, I think, has completely failed or one of the other components. I haven't really diagnosed it, but so we're going to have to deal with kind of crappy audio here for a little bit until the new one comes in. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put this thing into service mode. So those of you wondering, let me show you here. I don't know if I've ever showed this. But this switch right here, these switches, this front one, or most rear switch facing the back of the cart, this one here is what tells the rest of the circuit that it's in gear or in service mode, okay? So this cam, this yellow thing, you can pull it out and rotate it 180 degrees. So when the cart now is in gear, it's actually in uh, it's off. So this switch is disengaged. So when I turn the key on, step on a pedal, nothing happens. But if I put it in neutral, see how that cam lifts up and pushes the switch closed? Now the car will start. So this is service mode. This forward mode switch is just your backup alarm, which does not appear to be working or has probably got mud daubers in it. But if you ever want to, you know, put your cart in service mode, like say you park it or whatever, uh, you could always do that as like a, not an anti-theft thing, but like a deterrent, I guess. But we're going to leave it in service mode while we do this because we're going to need to see if we're having any electrical issues. And this way it disengages the rear tires from spinning in forward or reverse while we're running the engine. I'm going to start with the carburetor. I'm willing to bet there's a bunch of crap stuck in that because it's, I think it's been quite some time since that carb has been touched. Just like pulling the carburetor bits off. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. I got the wrong one. Let's go for high sixteenths. Come on, why is that? Oh, there we go. It's out of out of position there. Okay, I'm gonna have to take that off. I'm actually gonna take off the airbox side as well, just so I can. Even I can't see it's down off the screen here. I'm only doing that because it just gives me a little bit easier access to check all the stuff. I'm also going to pull the air filter off and check it while we're here. Actually, it looks pretty good. There's no date on it. It is my filter number, FIL0, FIL-0010. Uh, it's not bad. It's not dirty. So we're not going to change it really need it. Got a 10 mil here. We're going to take off this intake manifold. A couple of 10 millimeter screws, or nuts rather. I have to get a quarter inch driver to take off the fuel line from the carburetor side. And move that out of the way. Ooh, that is... It feels weird. Okay, we're going to get a socket on that so I'm not farting around with this long socket. So I can spin it up above the seats. This is supposed to be a 10 millimeter. And the nut is supposed to come off the stud. But most of the time, the stud ends up backing out of the engine. Whatever, it's not a big deal. Okay, save the gasket. That's good. That's always a good thing. And then we'll go with our 
quarter inch for the fuel line. Sometimes these are six millimeter I found. Uh, we're also gonna be changing fuel filters because we're doing carburetor work. I'm gonna pop this fuel line off. Tuck it up underneath the fuel line coming out of the tank so it doesn't drain all over the place. Snorkel is off or manifold, whatever you wanna call it. They're torques, though, I think I could definitely, definitely tell you that. Uh, 13, maybe? 13 or 15, I can't really see the, the handle on my driver there. Is, the Torx driver is wore out. Oh, why is there multiple washers on that? No clue, it doesn't matter. All right, so now we're gonna pull the hairpin, the clevis pin, out of, oh, I'm not, out of the, here so inside on this clip there's a little I should say on this pin there's a little hairpin on the clevis sometimes they could be really tricky to get out and they're tiny so don't lose it and then you have this plastic clevis pin uh, I think I have a bunch of those in metal I always try to keep some. Okay, and then you gotta take the backing plate off along with the carburetor because there's a spring, the throttle return spring. You need that. These carbs don't have any spring on the butterfly arm. So the throttle here, you can see it just floats. There's no spring here. And there's also no choke on the carb, in case you didn't know. The choke is done by the intake on all club cars, which is kind of interesting. All right, so there's the carburetor. Let me get the camera set up here. We'll take the bowl off and see what that looks like. Oh, okay, well, did that come up? Yep, all right, it loosened up. It felt like the wrench jumped. I don't know why. That is awfully tight. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is probably a good indicator of our problem. See how much crap is floating around in there? Yeah, so there's a bit of varnish in the bottom of this thing. Uh, what we're going to do now is like I always do. Oops, what, oh, the float pin came out. Well, I guess I could take that out. I'll just leave it in that little tray because it's got to come out anyway. I'm going to take this thing over to the parts washer, clean up some of this muck all over this thing. And then uh, we'll go over to the oil drum and take it apart. Canadian wildfire smoke is back. It's been making me sneeze all day. So that's been a lot of fun to deal with. Hmm. See how easily this thing comes apart. Does help I guess if you use the right size screwdriver. Let's see. Take out our take out a jet there. See, there's only a seat in here. There's no. This is your jet. There's no additional parts inside that one. Okay. There's the main jet. And Venturi thingy, I think. The club, the club car carburetors. There's not a lot to them. It's not like the easy goes. They have. 50,000 pieces. All right, so what I'm gonna do is rinse that down. I like to get a little puddle in there. That way, let it sit for a moment. It kind of breaks everything up nicely when it sits in there. This carburetor cleaner does a really good job. See the difference? It's all in there. So I'm willing to bet that this is the, probably the only problem. I think it was just because of the way the cart would be sitting. Uh, depending on 
could be depending on a couple of factors. I mean, if you're getting an intermittent start, I mean, you're, the cranking is working, but the starting is not starting. There we go. Much better. Is it perfect? Not really. But it's better than what it was. So I'm going to take our float valve here. I'm just checking to see the operation of our spring. Looks okay. I mean, looks like it might have jumped. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to hold the float valve with my fingers so it doesn't get carpet cleaner on it because it's rubber. I just rinse the float itself off. There's a, no gas in this one. So that tells me that it's good as far as no holes. If you have gas in the float, then there's a hole in it somewhere. Uh, typically the plastic ones don't fail, but I, you know, it's possible. Anything's possible. Okay. And this tube looks clear. But we're gonna... I always put my finger on the end. Carburetor cleaner straw inside and then just give it a little squirt. And then I'll blast through it a full, full tort on the carb cleaner can. What I like about this gum out, it has a high pressure mode. Holes are all nice and clear. I can see perfectly through them. What I do is I look through all the little tiny portholes up against like a white can. And as long as I can see through them and there's no obstructions, abstractions, obstructions, it's good. So there's the bowl, there's the float, there's the main jet. This looks like it's got some crud in it, but it could just be water. Just got to give that a little blasty and then blow it out. I can see perfectly round light coming through it. Uh, the pin is clean, the bolt is clean, we're good there. And then there's this jet here. This one's the hardest. I usually will put the straw on the end and give it just a little blast. I've had great success doing it that way. You can get a carburetor cleaning kit off like Amazon and stuff. They're like little brushes, but I can see through this perfectly fine. Everything looks good. So that's good. Now we go to the carburetor. I usually only break out the brushes if uh, if it's really bad. This carburetor has a bunch of soot in here. A little sooty in that. That doesn't go anywhere. Carb cleaner does usually does a good job at cleaning everything else. See all the soot how it's a little sooty in there? I don't know if you could see that. This must be must have been backfiring quite a bit for it to be like that. These older carbs or carts rather, they do backfire. I think we're gonna be replacing this gasket. I just don't trust it. Let me peel it off here and it started to fall apart a little bit on me. Let's see if we can. Okay, so I think we're good there. Let me scrape off that gasket material. A little bit of uh, corrosion on the face of this. You don't like that sound, turn away. Okay. Okay, we are ready to reassemble. Let that sit there for a minute. I like to let them air dry for a little while so that way the cold evaporate the cold caused by the evaporation of the carburetor cleaner. Uh, it allows the carburetor to dry a little bit before I start putting it together. At least the bottom side where the bowl is. Yeah, there's that. I 
put that in upside down? It didn't. Okay, we're good. Put that in. Normally you can got to make sure it comes through the inside of the carb. I don't know if you can see that in there. That brass tube right there. Probably can't see it. There. It's right there. You don't want to start cranking this jet down if that tube isn't fully protruding through because it, it won't tighten down properly and you'll have some issues. Okay. Put the float in. Put the pin in. The float is moving freely like it's supposed to. Okay. Oop, pin fell out. See, these pins are not pressed in. They just kind of fit in here. The bowl is the only thing that holds that pin in. So like when the bowl is on there, that pin can't fall out. It's just not possible. And I'll put this on here. I'll grab a gasket. Whoops. And we'll go reinstall this thing on the cart. Okay. There she is. The uh, GoPro is starting to overheat again, so... Turn the garage fan on. I know it's noisy, but I'm hot. I need to keep this thing cool too. All right, so we have our carburetor. We have our carburetor. This is our spacer plate. We're going to hook our return spring. I always go hook, if I can get it, there we go, hook down. And then here, hook it there. There we go. Put this on. And the gaskets on this insulator are, or this uh, plate, are perfectly fine. Slide it all the way back. Put on our new gasket. Now these do matter. Put this top, this hole, see these are the holes that goes on like this. These holes slide over the studs, and that hole goes on the top right if you're looking directly at the carburetor. Okay, and put the intake manifold on. They call it a manifold. It's, I guess technically it is, but you know, I don't really consider it a manifold. I would call it a intake snorkel, spout, snout, whatever. One nut on there. One nut here. And we're going to take our... This is the tricky part here. Getting this pin to go back in and not dropping it. There we go. That wasn't so bad. The plastic ones, the hole that goes through that you put the clip in is perpendicular to 90 degrees off of the uh, line, the mold, injection molded line that's on there. Okay, there's that. Now club cars don't run good with their air filters disconnected so keep that in mind remember to always hook your air intakes back up before firing these bad boys up so I'll have to change the fuel filters out to uh, the new ones here before we get into it So there's the intake hoses hooked up. We did not change the air filter because it's good. Uh, this is our carburetor overflow. Hook that back up. It'll keep dirt from getting in there. If you don't have one, you can always put a, I mean, I don't recommend it, but you could always put like a little rubber cap over that 
but I would suggest getting this vinyl tubing. I don't know exactly what size it is. Plug our spark plug back in. I'm gonna change the fuel filters here right quick. These have these really crappy spring clips on them. Not a fan. And these are not my filters because I don't use the ones with the metal on the inside. Okay. A little bit of moisture in them. Not too bad though. And the hoses are still flexible, they're not stiff. If they were stiff, I would say let's change them and put the rubber hoses on. These are Tigon. I don't know, is that a brand? I think that's probably a brand. Put the squeeze clamps back on here. Okay. That one off. Now this one here is a different style squeeze clamp. It's these little metal red ones, which I like. I like these ones better. Nope. There we go. No? No. There we go. Now it came off. So what I'm going to do is put the fuel line piece. No, I think we're going to be replacing this fuel line piece. Yeah, let's, I'm going to change this piece of fuel line because it's so stiff. A little three inch piece of fuel line. Okay. I'm going to slide my drain pan underneath. I'm going to let this drain. This way the whatever fuel is in this it'll be out. Okay, that's on. Now what I'm going to do before I hook it back up to the cart, I'm going to prime it. Okay, we're going to have to tighten that up. I just want to get this. Wow, that primed really quick. I just want to flush the system out here. There we go. That way I can make sure that the fuel going through this is clean. Customer said they did put fresh gas in this, so that's good. Okay. Just gotta get a piece of fuel line. And then we'll be all set. Let's get you down here again. So here's the fuel line here, just a little nipple piece. We're gonna put the clamp on, the screw clamp or the breeze clamp on the carburetor side. We'll take the little metal squeeze clamp, spring clamp, and put that on the fuel line, and then we'll plug in the fuel filter to the fuel line. It's nice and flexible, which is nice. And then move the clamp back into place. We'll reset our fuel line back onto that. That one's broke. Okay. See how the throttle cable is moving before I even hit the uh, starter? That's not supposed to happen, but we're not going to touch it. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see if it'll start and run on its own power without choke. Choke, remember, is on the intake air box. This may get loud. So I got a little bit of throttle. It's pumping. Look at that, it's already starting. So you can hear it's kind of got a little bit of a, just checking to see if this has got a, a rip in it or something. Oh. 
shouldn't have been running with that, but it is. Uh, I'm gonna pull the spark plug. We're gonna check the condition of that to see how it looks. But it's got a little bit of a kind of a mess. Before we put everything back together, I wanna do all this stuff. This way I can verify a few things and make sure stuff is working like it's supposed to and where it's at. Okay. Wow, ooh, that spark plug is white hot. It's the right number. EPR 5 es It's the correct number. Yeah, see the plug got a little bit of white on it. It's not bad, so we don't have to change it. And when I call the customer, I'll see if they want me to do an oil change. I don't know. Okay. So the spark plug's good. Now the carburetor's clean. Let's see how this looks. So it's down a little bit, but uh, before I put any oil in this, I'm going to call the customer first. See, like stuff like this, I don't add oil if something needs it without talking to the owner of the cart first. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, I don't want somebody coming back saying, well, I didn't tell you to do that, so now I'm not going to pay you, or you did this and I didn't ask you to and now something's wrong with the cart or blew up or it doesn't run and then you're the last one to touch it, that kind of thing. It's so hard. I mean, the oil looks good, so it probably was just done. So I'll just I'll ask the customer what he wants to do, but I got to get this on level ground first before I can get to that point. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot to tighten those down. That's probably why it's kind of spitting and sputtering. I overlooked that. I would have checked it eventually, but... this tight. Just got to make sure, what I like to do is make sure that before I really tighten that down, I get these started. These are supposed to be like anti-tamper things. I don't really know how effective they are because anybody who's anybody can go on Amazon and just order a Torx bit set. I mean, you could pretty much order any screw security screw bit available on the market unless it's proprietary or some guy just invented it you could order them all off amazon so it's kind of dumb tighten these up yeah see i didn't tighten them so maybe it was kind of running a little rich or lean rather too much air okay and don't go over tightening these nuts down because you will crack that manifold intake thing all right let's see how it runs now not to say that it won't still miss at some point i mean you know it is what it is all right so i'm gonna let this cool down i have to tighten up the starter generator belt it seems a little loose and that might be part of the starting hesitation uh the sluggishness that he was ex explaining so i'm kind of leaning towards that but I believe the carburetor was the cul main culprit of all of this. All right, we're going to try and adjust this starter generator belt. The engine's a little, well, the engine's not the problem. The, the problem is the, <laughs> the muffler for the exhaust. It's really difficult to get in there with a, ra a ratchet or a wrench, um, especially with carts with back seats on them. You can't really get to the access panel very easily. So I get in behind the starter generator with the air ratchet so I can break loose the adjuster slide bolt. And that way I can raise and lower the starter generator with the pry bar or with the, uh, I use my pickle fork because it seems to be the best thing that gets in here. I usually go in right here and I don't have to pry on against the exhaust, which I see a lot of people do. They'll get in here because they don't really know that that bar is in there. You can't really see it on some carts. And then they start squashing the exhaust. The pickle fork just gives me the best leverage. It works really well and it's a nice strong steel, so that's why I use it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna crack it loose. At least we're going to attempt to crack loose these. Come on. 
these are the pivot bolts. I always crack those loose first. Well, not always, but all right. Let's see if I have enough air hose here. I do have the key off and we're still in service mode. So now what I do is I reach back behind with my left arm and try to find the pivot bolt. And then I send in this extension and the socket. Normally these are half inch. They're supposed to be half inch. All right. The problem is some of the wire that's in here is sometimes gets in the way. You might only be able to see my arm, but that's all right. So, there. Is that? Half inch. What is going on here? For some reason, the socket just won't. All right, well, let me take the socket off. See if I can. Oh, what is this? Oh, I see. Okay. The wiring was in the way. There we go. I just wasn't able to get a good angle on it, I guess. There we go. Okay. A couple more. You don't have to loosen it far. And now I have the ratchet turned on to tighten. Okay, now I'm adjusting. I'm prying down, which is pushing up on the starter generator. Oh. Tell me that fell off. And it did. The, the extension came out of the socket. I usually use a deep socket because it's, you have to. Well, you don't have to, but a shallow socket won't get on there. There is something in my way here. Don't know what it is. Okay. Okay, it held. All right, so that's tight enough. I'm gonna pull the socket off the extension. Pull my ratchet out. Switch over to 9 sixteenths, and then we'll tighten these up. Sometimes they just should tighten right up. Let's see. What the? Put the 9 sixteenths back on. What the hell's wrong with me? Or the half inch. Okay. Pull the pickle fork out. of the ratchet won't get in between that and the starter generator so I'll go this way. There we go. Okay. Starter generator belt's nice and tight. Key on. Just like it was meant to be. Alrighty guys, just got back from my quick little road test just to make sure everything was good. Uh, the cart runs really good. Uh, it does have a little bit of a hiccup every now and then, but you know, it is a 96 and uh, it has had a, probably a hard life. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know the exact history of this cart. I think I've only worked on it maybe once or twice. It's run on carburetor. We pulled it, cleaned it, put it back together. You saw the debris in it. New fuel filters, air filter was still good. Uh, just so that starter generator belt to kind of take out some of that delay in starting because it was slipping every once in a while. And that could be contributing to the complaint of it being sluggish on startup. So I don't know, but we took that out of the equation. So now it's nice and tight and it's in good shape too. So there's no reason to replace it. So, all right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. You have no idea. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video.